Welcome to the Frisco Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Ellis, and today I get to interview my wife. This is so fun. Yes, we're going to talk about <laughs> books because we're... you have become an absolutely voracious reader oh, in the last thank couple you. of years. Thank you. How many books did you read last year? Okay, last year I read 24 books. Right. And this year? In 2018. So far, as of August. As of August 2019, I have read 38 books, and my goal is 50. Since January 1st. Since January 1st, yes. That's probably more books than I've read in my whole life. Well, I doubt that because you're (laughs) smarter than I am, and, you know, all that big tech brain you got over there. But first, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about where we physically are right now. So, this is the first episode that we are recording in our new podcast studio at UNT Inspire Park. Yes, in our new offices. And we are super thrilled with this room and how it turned out and all of the baffling on the walls and the fact that we've got four mics and we've got a a flat screen TV to show great things while we're recording. So I'm just thrilled. This is like a dream come true. Pretty amazing. And UNT, the guys did a great job. We're very grateful to them for all the work they put into this room. So. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. All right. So we get back into talking about books? Yes, we can get back into talking about books. All right. So we're going to talk about your fall reading list. Yes. And that's a, a rundown of, I think, uh, four books that you're recommending for, for fall. fall. Yes. I'm just going to kind of recap four that I've read already. Um, and in no particular order, um, I kind of did a how to up your shelfy game for a summer reading list um, on the site. And it was a big article, um, a gigantic listicle on there. So yeah, we're going to talk about fall. All, the, all of the kids have gone back to school and they're all reading. So parents, it's time to break out the bookmarks and head back to the library and get some interesting stuff. That's right. Summer's over. Time to turn your brains back on. That's right. Exactly. So um, <laughs> so I'm going to start off with a fiction book that I have not finished, but I'm reading it right now called Mr. Penumbra's 24-Hour Bookstore by Robin Sloan. And this book is just a whimsical little jaunt to back in 2009 during the uh, Great Recession. Um, the book is set in San Francisco, and the hero of the story has been fired from his web design um, coding job because of the Great Recession, and he's taken a job in Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore, and he soon discovers that there's rarely a customer in the bookstore. Like he has, first of all, he works the night shift. He literally works from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., There's rarely a customer that comes into the store, but when they do come into the store, they ask for a section that he internally dubs to himself the way back list because it's all of the dusty, musty items like way in the back of the store and they're hard to find on shelves. And, but these customers are completely deliberate about what book they want. Now, not only do they ask for a specific dusty, musty book, they also don't pay for them. They turn in another dusty, musty book in exchange for the new one that they just get. So our hero of the story, Clay Jannon, is perpetually confused by this process, the fact that no money is changing hands, but yet this is supposed to be a business and a 24-hour one at that. So... It, I'm having quite the joy ride on this one. What would you say made this book the most fun for you to read? Well, the reason why I picked it up is because it was recommended on a list um, for book lovers about book lovers or book or libraries. Very meta. Yes, it was. Yes, it was <laughs> metadata on libraries, people who love to read, etc. So I received this list of 10 books that were either about libraries, about books, about the process of reading, etc. And this one looked completely the most intriguing and it is so fun. It's completely fiction and it's, it's, being, it's giving me a great time right now. And what little you've told me about it, the, the characters that come into oh, the Oh, bookstore yeah. are probably more interesting and quirky than the characters yes. that they're reading about in the books that oh, come in Oh, yes, yes, yes. Quite the cast. Yes. 
All right, that sounds yes. like a fun one. That's, uh, so that's kind of brain fiction. candy, though, right? Brain candy, totally fun. You have to keep up with it, though. It's okay. not like a complete, you know, just something that you're going to read in a day. Um, so I'm, I'm loving that, too. So that's my fiction book. Um, my second book that I'd like to talk about is something that I recently finished, and you had to witness me hemming and hawing and exasperated throughout almost the entire process. All right, you're not me. selling this book very well. Yes, I am going to sell it. <laughs> I'm selling this book well. So the title of the book is Invisible Women, Data Bias in a World Designed for Men by Caroline Criado Perez. And it, it, first of all, I want to say this book is not a man basher. This is this is something that is factual information about how things are designed for men at, without women in mind. And I'll give two examples. Number one is traffic lights and traffic patterns. Men typically, you know, from the 50s or the 40s, whenever they started working and really driving cars, men leave home, drive directly to a destination, stay at that destination all day, and then drive directly back home. Women get in a car and drive to the school to drop off kids, then they go to the dry cleaner, then they stop by Starbucks and grab a coffee, and then they go to the grocery store, and then they eventually come back home. So you've got men who have a single destination, single point um, of, of, of driving, and women who do a spaghetti bowl of driving on a daily basis, typically, and how our traffic patterns are designed to give the maximum free flow for that linear structure of driving. And so women are um, penalized, if you will, for having that kind of driving pattern. So that's one. That's one example of data bias in this book. My second example that I'll share is office temperatures and the fact that women freeze in the summer. Most of us have to take blankets, put heaters under our desks. There's a lot of women smiling and nodding right now because I know they do this. Um, extra sweaters they keep in the office. And that is because in 1950, a scientific study was conducted on a 170 pound male office worker and what his resting metabolic uh, body temperature was and what would be of the maximum com maximum comfort to him and that that level is 68 degrees so that's why all offices are set at 68 degrees and women freeze because we don't have that much of a metabolism we have more body fat on us and less muscle and so therefore that's why we freeze so those are just two little examples there's a ton of other great um, data on the world and honestly this book was something that just was really eye-opening. It was, you know, something that I wouldn't have typically picked up. Um, again, it was something that kind of wandered through an email list on me, or I, it might have been recommended to me by Goodreads. So I'm on a site. We can talk about that at the end, but goodreads.com. Don't let me forget to come back to that. So that's my, my second book. Do you have any questions about that one? You want to I probably have a million questions about that one. Okay. Probably much more would take much more time than what we have here. Okay. Um, but I think there was one other example I remember you talking about that okay. was uh, bathrooms or bathroom designs or something to that effect. How, you know, like typically if you go into an establishment, there's a men's room and a women's room. Mm -hmm. And yet women have more... A need oh, of yes. the facilities uh, the than time. men do, right? Yes. It takes them longer. Yes, yes. They're doing Just, other things like maybe fixing makeup and things like that. Well, a lot of times it's purely clothing design. Like, th think about just the physical anatomy of how much more clothing women have to physically take off in order to use a facility, whereas you guys can walk in and use a zipper and then walk <laughs> out and be done. I mean, that's not even getting into, yes, the checking the hair, the checking the makeup. Makeup, right. You know, the straightening of the clothes that you've now completely half redressed yourself. So, yes, that those are very interesting stats around even when uh, facilities design um, a, a large number of restrooms for women versus versus men, they still typically build an equal number and how that just will never work. Hmm. So, Interesting. 
Okay, and also, and also the design. Well, we won't talk about that. So anyway, yes. All right, let's go on. Let's talk about uh, book number three. What okay, book up? number three um, is a mystery suspense because you know I love my Agatha Christie. Um, so Agatha Christie is literally my favorite author in the world, but this one is not by her. This is a true story called "I'll Be Gone in the Dark." One Woman's Obsessive Search for the Golden State Killer by Michelle McNamara. And Michelle McNamara was a um, an in- investigative journalist, and unfortunately she passed away during the writing of this book, so she did not see it through to completion. Um, the foreword is by Jillian Flynn of Gone Girl fame, um, and the afterword and completion of the book is by a man named Patton Oswald, and it's a story about, um, for more than 10 years, a mysterious and violent predator committed 50 sexual assaults in Northern California in the 70s and 80s. And it's her investigative journalism of finding who this killer was. And to her credit, it was through her work that um, authorities eventually find who this guy is like really recently, like in the last th- two or three years, Interesting. The, the killer has was discovered. And the, all of these killings happened in the And it was a research from her book that led them? Yes, not completely directly, but she did pull a lot of threads that were new findings in um, case files that had gone stored in the back of a closet. Wow. So yes, incredibly um, interesting book to watch a woman kind of have that investigative mind and kind of see where that all went. Plus I love a true story. Sure. So that was good. That sounds interesting. Is it, was it, a, was it scary to read at all? No, no, it really wasn't. And it wasn't, um, there's not a lot of gore and detail on everything. It's really just a lot about the minutia of the clues and how professionals look at things that way, how police, FBI, you know, crime scene investigators, just how they look at different, um, pieces of evidence. So it was, it was very interesting from that perspective. All right. All right, very good. Okay, Okay, so you got one more for us. I've got one more, and this one was also included in my summer shelfie reading list, but I just have to give it an extra plug um, because it motivates me. I've read it twice, and I'm probably going to read it a third time here pretty soon. Um, It's called Finding the Exit. It's not where you start. It's where you finish by Lee Ellermeyer. So she is a Dallas woman who started an orthodontic device company and was, um, you know, it's, it's the story of her whole process of being a startup and taking a company all the way through to that final, um, acquisition by a fortune 100 company in less than five years. So she's kind of my girl crush. So she motivates me. <laughs> and she is local. Like you she said, is she's, local. A, she's here in she Dallas. Is and here in lo- she, she is here in Dallas and is still here in Dallas. And yes. Yeah. It's, she's got a really really powerful story. Yes. Um, I haven't actually read the book, but I have met her. That's where I actually got the book yes. and how it ended up on your shelf. Yes. And um, quite something. If, if she's ever doing a book signing locally, she's definitely somebody I would recommend to go out and meet and hear her speak and, and learn a little bit more about her story, both from a, a, an entrepreneurial standpoint, but also from just a personal standpoint and everything, all, all the adversity that she has gone through and, 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 and where she, how she got to where she is now, just really fascinating. I don't want to ruin it for you. Just go pick up the book. And what was the name of that again? Finding the Exit. It's not where you start. It's where you finish by Lee Eller, Ellermeyer. And it's L-E-A, even though it's pronounced Lee um, Ellermeyer. All right. So, so we're going to put links to all of these books in the show notes so yes. you can go out and grab your ebook, hard copy, whatever it is that you want. So we'll make sure that you guys can get easy access to these books. Do you have a book you want to talk about, Scott, before we close out? I've read a couple of books this year. I could uh, probably recommend either one of them. They've both been very good reads. But I'm going to go with one called Factfulness. Ooh. So Factfulness is a, is a book by a, a gentleman named Hans Rosling. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2017. And I actually didn't know that until I read the book. Uh, but I had followed him for several years, and he's done a lot of uh, videos and some online things. But he he started uh, an organization that's now run, I believe it's by his son and daughter-in-law, 
that they, they research various topics and their mission is to, to bring a, a factful worldview to people. So the, the interesting thing about the book was, and he demonstrates this very clearly, that most of us have bias in our view of the world that is outdated. So our, our view of the world is based on things that we learned a long time ago. And even things that like people in my age range that we learned back in the 70s and 80s and 90s, which may not at all be true today, and we know they're not true, but yet our view of the world is still biased by the things that we learned back then. We still think they're true because we just haven't gone out to find, you know, the information or done the research that tells us that's not really true anymore. And part of the problem is the longer you believe something, the more ingrained it becomes in yes. your worldview. And the most fun part of the book is how he demonstrates that when he quizzes people, and I don't mean just average citizens, he will quiz experts in industry and how often they perform very poorly on these, these basic quizzes because of that outdated worldview. Okay, so much so, so much so that he did a random uh, test with chimpanzees. <laughs> now, you can imagine chimpanzees don't really understand the questions or the answers, so their guesses are completely random. But in a random sampling, they still end up getting about a 33% on the quiz. There were only one or two examples where anybody, any group, ever exceeded 33%. Oh Most of the gosh. time, even people who are very knowledgeable, uh, they would quiz them on on things like, you know, uh, what is the expectation of our world population in 2040 or 2050? Um, are people better off or worse off than they were 10 or 20 years ago? Are people wealthier? Are they healthier? All these types of things. Uh, and, and in most cases, in almost every case, they scored worse than chimpanzees, oh whose my. guesses were completely random because our, our view of things is so biased by outdated information. So the whole book is about, it, it's partly about what is true and what are some of the more factual things that are going on. And he supports it with a tremendous amount of research and evidence. But the bigger picture is changing the way you think about the world and recognizing that the information I have right now may or may not be current, accurate, and it's always worthwhile to challenge our own knowledge and assumptions because much of the time what we believe is simply not true. That sounds incredibly it's, it's interesting. It's a really fascinating book. I'm going to have to book. borrow that. It'll make you question everything, which can be a little bit scary, but it's it will change the way you think about the world. So Factfulness by Hans Rosling, really, really good read. All so right. that'd be my one recommendation. All right. Well, I think that's a pretty good list. We can at least get people through Christmas maybe on those five books. That would be, that'd be pretty good. That's almost one a month at this point. So guys get cracking. All right. So we're going to wrap this up, but I hope you uh, had fun. This was something different on the Frisco podcast. And we'll be doing more of, of this kind of thing in the future. So we'll try to get Wendy back for a winter reading list uh -oh. since she's our resident reader right now. <laughs> Maybe we'll get some of the other team to input as well. But yes. thanks for joining us today. And thank you for your recommendations. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And one final PS to everyone who's listening. Come by and visit us. Come and see our podcast studio. We are typically here several days a week, if not all of them, Monday through Friday during office hours. So we are at the UNT Inspire Park building at 6170 Research Road in North Frisco, just, north of, just south of El Dorado on Frisco Street. And there's some more stuff being built out here. So once it's all done and ready, yes. then we're going to have a ribbon cutting and we'll announce and that so everybody can come party. out. To that. Yeah, we're going to throw down for that a one. Big party. All right. But until then, thanks again for tuning into the Frisco podcast. Please be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, whatever your favorite podcast outlet is. We're there. So go out and subscribe to the Frisco podcast. We really appreciate it. And leave us a comment, let you know what you think of the shows. And on this one... What are your favorite books? If you have a favorite book, leave us a comment, and we'd love to hear about it. Until next time. <laughs>